Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way! And today we're going to review the Kingsong 18L. So, let me tell you more about it. First up, also big thanks to Voltride for providing me this wheel for testing purposes. If you want to get this wheel or any other wheel in Europe, feel free to use the link in the description as well as my coupon code called WRONGWAY to get an additional 5% off. I also do receive kickback from these orders, so you also support the channel by using those coupon codes. Anyways, in this review, just as in any of my other reviews, I'll tell you about the pros, but also about the cons of this wheel. It will be structured into six categories, just as usual, and this will be safety, durability, ride, performance, features and practicality, and then at the end, a conclusion. So sit down, or even, I don't know, lay down if you feel comfy like that, relax and enjoy the video. And before we get maybe into the first category, which is safety, a little background on the 18L. This is not a new wheel. I think it was um, introduced in 2019, so it's already three years old, but it's still kicking, alive and kicking. I really enjoyed um, the months that I spent with it. I put around 250 kilometers um, on it. I did a range test. I did all of my usual stuff, my usual testing with wheels. And just as a general overview, I was very pleased with it. I think it's a lot of fun um, and still a valid contender in 2022. With that said, let's start with safety. And in general, King Song is known for the good battery tech. Um, all of the you know, electrical layout is solid. Uh, the BMSs communicate with the motherboard, which is good. They're using a pretty solid passive BMS system. Now, it's no, you know, active BMS, it's no smart BMS. You can't check what is the voltage of each set of cells, but it's safe and yeah, I think that's the most important thing to have a safe battery layout that is just, you know, if something goes wrong, then you're no you'll be notified, you'll be brought to a stop or um, the EUC won't allow you to ride on it. There's no hot charge port like on Bigode wheels. There is a plastic case for the battery. The battery is also mounted with screws to the shell. If you want to get any more in depth in the safety, then also feel free to check out my teardown of this wheel. When it comes to safety when riding, there need to be safe limits implemented into the software of an electric unicycle. And here we do have them. First of all, when accelerating, there is a limit um, and when you over torque the wheel if you try to accelerate too hard there will be either beeping or in a extreme scenario there will be a pedal dip but you can still recover from that pretty nice then when it comes to top speed there is a tilt back so if you reach the top speed of 50 kilometers an hour on a full charge then the pedals will go up and slow you down and this limit also goes down as your battery level goes down. Now, I experienced it once and it was pretty hard. It can like throw you off and surprise you, but that's better than being too fast and risking a cutout. Now, also keep note that on the Kingsong 18 XL with the bigger battery, those limits will be set higher um, because it just has more batteries and therefore more power available throughout the whole charge. There is also a limit when overheating the wheel. If the wheel gets overheated, it will not allow you to ride by implementing a strong tilt back. Speaking of strong tilt back, there is also a limit when your battery is low. When you have basically zero or like 2% battery, um, there is a strong tilt back which will bring you to a stop. And this is good because you shouldn't ride a wheel because if you would accelerate a bit too hard, then you might fall. So yeah, the limits are there. Good job, King Song. Although a small asterisk here, the limits on the 18L are lower than on the 18XL, just because it has more batteries, the 18XL. And I wouldn't call those wheels extreme performance wheels. And although they have low end torque with a heavier rider at higher speed, I would be careful with accelerating. Next up, let's talk about the water resistance. Weather just keeps on bringing. And this is just okay here. There was some DIY involved from Voltride to make it just a bit 
more safe in, in terms of water ingress but the mother motherboard is on top um, it's fairly well sealed although there is no ip rating so i hope that for a future version there will be a ip rating there are definitely some points that could be improved especially at the speaker holes and some silicone around the outer shells nonetheless i think it's already a pretty good contender for a rainy season rider Last but not least, the cooling is also pretty good on the 18XL, but that I will have to actually say from experience because I already did a review two years ago on the 18XL and I believe that in my wheel the temperature sensor it was something wrong because it was just constantly showing the same temperature. But from experience I do know that Kingsong wheels ride cool and chill, so if you live in a hilly area you're really well off with a 18XL or any other Kingsung wheel. So now let's move on to durability. First up, the shell is pretty durable. I wouldn't say that it's anywhere close to a roll bar or a super robust wheel, but it will hold up some crashes and it's relatively easy to repair. And again, if you want any more info on the durability, check out my teardown vid. Keep in mind that this wheel has already 4,600 kilometers on the clock and when it comes to faults on the wheel, I just had two. One being the button for the handle mechanism and I don't know if it was because of a fall or just wear and tear of a part, just needed some wiggle action to pull it out. And the second thing is just half of the LED panel on one side didn't really work well. I don't know if the plug got loose or something's up with the LED panel. but. I think that's a pretty good result for a wheel with such comparably <laughs> big mileage. And in general, if you have a long mileage 18L or 18XL, please comment below if the wheel is durable, if it has a good longevity. And where the 18L and XL also really shine are the strong L hangers, the pedals are also robust, and this is what also puts it above, for example, the Emotion V10F, which has a comparably similar battery to the 18L, and especially will be a good thing for heavier riders and, I guess, slightly more sporty off-road and freestyle-oriented riders. Still, it's not a hollow bore motor, so I wouldn't do any crazy jumps with it. In general, the rim durability is okay. I wouldn't say it's too strong or it's not too weak. It's just there in the middle, sort of. But the tire is slightly too narrow for my taste. And as the standard, the gold standard today is 18 by three inch tires or 20 by three inch tires, you can feel that the two and a half inch tire is just a bit less comfy and it definitely doesn't have the same amount of um, meat of tire for curbs or going downstairs. I wouldn't recommend going with this wheel downstairs. Um, popping some smaller curbs is okay, but keep in mind to keep that pressure a bit higher, around 40, 45 PSI, and especially for heavier riders. Um, yeah, I think that a bigger tire wheel with a bigger diameter, more meat, would be just better. Last but not least, in terms of durability, sadly there was no Loctite anywhere to be found in, um, in this wheel, which would prevent the um, screws from loosening. I don't know if they do it now if in their current batches, but yeah, this was something missing in mine. With that said, let's move on to the ride. And when it comes to riding the 18L, I think it's just so universal. It's very pleasant, there is no pedal dipping in turns, there is no pedal dipping in successive bumps. I think in general it's a lot of fun to ride and it's a nice change from all of the heavy wheels that come out now. Now this wheel just weighs around 21 kilograms, 24 kilograms for the 18XL and this is relatively light in today's standards now and it's really easy to throw it around corners because it's also very thin. And now the top of the wheel is around 14 centimeters whilst for example the 16x or other big wheels are usually 20 centimeters wide or more so yeah it's just really nice to carve on the wheel it's a lot of fun all of the modes are also nice um, and all of them are very i don't know springy and reactive and soft mode medium mode hard mode they are just all go very well. Soft being like the most mellow and comfortable and easy to accelerate, whilst hard, hard gives you the most uh, performance and biggest um, responsiveness. 
It's also very easy and effortless to ride. It's easy to go up steep hills. It's easy to go down again. It's easy to brake and accept. Yeah, it's it's just effortless to ride. However, sometimes if you fall, you, you do need to recalibrate the wheel in the app. In general, it's also very sporty and nimble, and because of the low pedals, you also have a lot of stability. This wheel is also, in my opinion, a very good starter wheel, easy to learn how to ride on it. However, the low pedals also can potentially scrape if you make a very sharp, sharp turn. <laughs> and they're definitely too low at around 13 centimeters to go off-roading. If you want a off-road wheel, better go with the 16X or other wheels that have higher placed pedals. The pedals are also in a very flat setup, they're not in a V-shape, so this is pretty good for um, longer rides, however, for any kind of performance riding, I would just like a bit more angle. Definitely some Nilodove would help. The relatively narrow 2.5 inch wide tire provides actually plenty of grip. Uh, it does exert a bit of train tracking, so if there is some sort of unevenness on the road, it will tend to steer you in one or the other direction. But it's way less than what you can find on the 9bot Z10 anyways, and also way less than on the 16X. It's also really easy to jump up a curb if you have some pads on it, uh, because it's just light, and then also maneuvering at low speed, very, very enjoyable. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Oh, and going at higher speeds at 30, 40, 50 kilometers an hour is also very good. Feels like a cruiser. Maybe the only thing I would have to pick a bit about is that the tire is just not as comfortable as a 18 by 3 inch tire. So bigger bumps, going off-road, having a bit of a worse quality road, it just feels worse than on a 18 by 3 inch tire. If, with that said, if you have any more questions about the ride, I made another video about it. Feel free to check it out. And now we'll move on to the performance. And even though this board has just 6 MOSFETs, while the usual performance you see today have 12, it still packs a punch. And the acceleration, well, you can see the tests now. Uh, I definitely backed off a bit when going onto the top speed, but still, especially the low end torque is really great on this wheel. First time also in my reviews, I made a brake test from 40 kilometers an hour. And the braking definitely feels easy to do and especially with power pads it makes it a lot easier. Uh, you have to remember that this wheel was produced before power pads so uh, yeah we we came a long way since that time. When it comes to hill climbing it's a very very good performance here. I did the 30 degree incline without problem, 35 degree incline without any beeps and problems. I tried to do the 40 degree incline, however it started beeping at me halfway. So with the help of my hands I could get up there, but without the help of my hands it would just pedal dip too much and wouldn't allow me to go up there. Maybe with the 18XL I could do it, but not with the 18L. Now this 40 degree incline is possible quite easily with the 16X. However, at the end of this hill it also starts beeping. So the low end torque is definitely there. If you try to accelerate a bit harder when you're already going like 10, 20 kilometers an hour, you might hear the beeps and I once over torqued it and then the pedal dip. But in day to day scenarios, if you don't go full ham all the time, it's really a stellar performance, very smooth, nice power delivery, very responsive. With that said, I also did a range test on this wheel and I got around 50 kilometers. Really good result for the battery. In general, uh, King Song wheels are very efficient with the battery used. They generally discharge to a lower voltage than other wheels with the same uh, battery setup. So with the 18XL, I believe it will be around 80 kilometers. Just really good performance. And keep in mind, this wheel was used by Monsieur Flex with just two stock chargers to make a world tour. So yeah, the range gotta be good. 
So now let's talk about the features and practicality of the wheel. And again, this is a category where the 18L shines. Well, the lighting in the front is okay. Uh, it's definitely not sufficient for speeds of 40, 50 kilometers an hour, but at least it doesn't blind any oncoming traffic. In a newer version though, I would like to see some more powerful lighting there. The tail light though is very visible and good. I don't think that it's necessarily needed to have those reversible lights so that both the front light and the tail light can be like tail light and front light and reverse, but still it's there. There's also some side RGB and you can select different presets, different shapes that it shows. It's also susceptible to music, so if you put music on it's sort of like a equalizer for loudness and it also shows you the battery state when the wheel is stationary. There is sadly no screen here. In today's standards I would like to see one here, but back then no screens. The speakers are also of good quality and especially outside I feel they just sound pretty well. They're relatively loud and they don't distort much. I think they're good speakers. Well, not anywhere near any, you know, JBL, um, I know Flip or other speakers, but good enough I think. There's two charge ports in the back and they are Lenovo style. Not the most current can flow through them, but they're easy to put in. They're reversible, so you can put them upside down. By connecting two chargers, you can charge up the wheel in around four hours. Stock charger is around seven or eight hours. The chargers are also fanless, which is very nice. On the other side, we can find two USB ports for charging your phone and I don't know, smartwatch at the same time. Moving on, one of the best features on the Kingsong 18L is the lift switch trolley handle combo. And it's really great because there is no button involved to disengage the motor. You just sort of lift up the wheel when you're stationary. So if your journey involves a lot of stairs or lifting up the wheel, this is the wheel to pick up or the 16X. The trolley handle is also really tall, maybe just a bit wobbly, but this height and shape for just pushing the wheel around in a store or just pushing it around, I don't know, anywhere is just great. It's very comfy, it's really easy to push it up a hill too because there is a big leverage on it because the uh, trolley handle is long. Naturally, it also locks in place and there's a button to disengage the locking mechanism. As already mentioned earlier, this wheel is relatively easy to disassemble and the tire change, I would say, is semi-easy. It's not an easy tire change because an easy tire change wouldn't include disassembling the wheel, just, you know, trying to get the tire and the L hangers out. However, there is an MT60 plug um, to disconnect the motor wiring so you don't need access to the motherboard to change the tire. Now let's talk a bit about the pedals or foot plates. Their size is okay. However, I think that in this day and age we need pedals with studs, with MTB studs, because over time the grip tape just gets used and it gets worn off and during rainy times if the, if the grip tape becomes wet or if it's muddy, it's way easier to slip off the pedals. The pedal position is held on by friction, which can be a bit tedious at times. They're not necessarily super difficult to open up or close, but it's a bit of a process. It requires a bit of force. The wheel does come with a mud guard in the back, however I didn't have it, so the mud was all, all over the place. Uh, and definitely in the front there is no additional mud guard, so prepare that if you're riding in rain or misty weather, your shoes will get additionally soaked from the water that's splashing in front of the wheel. Last but not least, let's talk a bit about the app and system in the wheel. The app is very versatile. There's many settings you can choose from the pedal angle, calibration, there's a horn. Yeah, the app is just very versatile. I would let you dive in by yourself because I don't want this video to get too long. One of the critical features of the app are also the updates. They're really important and they really help with the wheel's performance and make it more powerful. And in one update, for example, it also made the wheel quieter. Really good work, King Song, there to support the wheels that are already out there on the market. Last but not least, in ter terms of features, there's a beeper and it is audible. It might have been louder, but it's still very noticeable. So let's conclude it all! So in my eyes, the Kingsong 18L and XL are still very solid wheels in 2022. There's still a lot of low-end torque, they're great climbers and the range is pretty solid too. I think they're very universal, they have lots of features and are very practical and they still have a pretty decent longevity and durability. 
they're also relatively easy to maintain. That is not to say that they're the ultimate performance wheels, but if you want something to get you around town on bicycle paths easily and efficiently, then I think that it's really difficult to find something better than that. With that said, I think that a 2022 version should have improved lighting, a 18 by three inch tire, a smart BMS, quicker stock charging speeds, a bit improved water resistance and slightly more power. I think that the screen would be also good, better foot plates and also higher face foot plates. So instead of just bringing out altogether new wheels, I think that King Song could focus on just improving this one and it will still be a bestseller like the 16X, which is selling until today. With that said, probably a lot of you are asking yourself the question, 16x or 18xl for heavier riders i would choose the 16x because it has just more power uh, for riders that just want a bit more performance a bit more off-road performance and better turning i'd go with the 16x and for riders that are more mellow that want i know longer rides and a bit of a less demanding ride in terms of train tracking and easier turning like like more effortless turning then the 18xl is still a good choice with that said if you're still here leave a like on the video subscribe to see more content like this i'll see you in the next video I'll see you soon Thank you.